Hey everyone, in this video I'll be painting and basing my Primaris Redemptor Dreadnought for my Ultramarines army. As I'm recording this, I'm about to join a local Escalation League, and this guy will be part of my army in the first round where we're playing 750 points games. As you can see, he's properly dirty, covered in grime, battle damage and scratches, and apparently he just pulled apart a gene stealer called Neophyte. This guy will be a perfect addition to my Grimdark Ultramarines. I'm trying to win the painting competition that comes with the Escalation League with these guys. So like with all of my models, I start with a Zenithal highlight with my primers. Just spray the whole model black and then spray with white primer from the top. This will already give the model a bit of highlight and shading. Then to start, I'm dry brushing on Stegodon Scale Green. This is done very fast and rough and I don't care if I accidentally paint over some parts that aren't supposed to become blue later on. I also don't bother with applying a layer that fully covers the model. No too thin coats here. After that, I immediately do the same, but then with Thunderhawk Blue. This time I'm dry brushing again and I do it just a little bit lighter than the previous layer. I also dry brush a bit heavier on the top than on the bottom of the model. That way I'm already making more highlights at the top and keeping the bottom a little bit darker. Then I dry brush Lead Belcher on the frame of the Dreadnought. This metallic paint will contrast nicely with the matte blue on the armor plating. I apply this to the weapons as well and the rear of the model. Then it's time for one of my favorite steps in mini painting. I drown the model in non oil. Just apply this wash liberally and get it everywhere. The blue and metallic parts both need this wash. Once the wash is dry, I go over the blue parts with Teclis Blue. This is a super bright blue color and it will look a bit out of place initially. But we're going to darken and dirty this model later, so that's okay. I'm using this to make some more highlights as well, so I apply it more heavily at the top of the model than at the bottom of the model. In the next few steps, I'm blocking in the other colors on the Dreadnought, so it's time to put away the dry brush and get out a smaller detail brush. First, I start with some Abaddon Black on the details on the weapons and any of the hoses and pipes on the back. Then I use Lead Belcher to clean up any of the metal parts that have gotten some Teclis Blue on them. And I use this to paint in some more details. Then I use Rune Lord Brass for the gold details. I decided to do a bit of trim work on this Dreadnought as well because I like the extra gold on my models and it really stands out. If you're going for a grim dark look, you also need some really bright highlights. Then I use corn red on some parts of the weapons. These are the sort of canister looking parts that supply the ammo to the weapon. I added the purity seal and decals to the model. I'll make a video soon about applying decals and how easy it really is. I was a bit afraid of it when I first started doing it, but it turns out to be really, really simple. The purity seal I use here is from the Ultramarines Primaris upgrade pack, by the way. The decals are always very bright white and a bit shiny too, so they have to be darkened a bit and all the bits that I blocked in need some shade as well. At the same time, the armor plating that was painted with Teclas Blue needs some darkening down as well. So the whole model, everything on it, gets a non-oil bath. Then I use Lead Belcher to apply some battle damage to the model. I use a dry brush and dab on the Lead Belcher on the corners and edges of any armor plating. I also make sure to add some extra to the fist because he has been punching some heretics and xenos with that already. And so then it's time for heat damage for the weapons. If he keeps firing that Gatling cannon, the muscle is bound to get hot. And of course the flamethrower under his fist will get some of this heat damage too. For this effect, I'm only using three paints. I start with Balthazar Gold and I paint about 80% of the surface with this. So starting from the muzzle and working backwards, I leave about 10 to 20% visible in Lead Belcher. But the rest gets a cover of Balthazar Gold. Then I apply Contrast Magos Purple 
and this goes over about 50% of the surface. Make sure you get some decent coverage with this paint. You might want to apply two layers of this. Now while the contrast paint dries, I'm putting some ashen grey on the exhausts and vents of the model. This is to simulate heat damage and soot building up there. Then I dab and dry brush on some Rhinox hide in the same spots. This is to give a more layered effect on these parts because it's never a single color of dirt and grime. Then I finish these bits with a little bit of Abaddon black. Just be very subtle with this. You don't want to paint these parts completely black. Now I'm going back to the weapons to finish the heat damage. I just dry brush on some Abaddon black to simulate the black suit at the end of the barrel and the flamethrower. Finally, I highlight the red details on the model with some Evil Suns Scarlet. I put it on with one brush and then feather it with my dry brush to make sure this highlight isn't too bright. Now it's time for the first step of the basing process. I apply a thin layer of Armageddon dust all over the base. And it's okay if some of this gets on the feet and legs of the Dragnaught. That just makes it look even more like he has been slogging through the dirt for a while. Then I wash the whole model and the base in AK Interactive's Streaking Grime. This is a brown greenish wash that looks very dirty and dusty once it dries. Then I dry brush on some Zandri dust on the legs of the dread to simulate some of the dust from the ground being kicked up and sticking to them. So then it's time to finish the base. For this I'm using some of the ready basing material from Geek Gaming Scenics. This stuff is amazing. All you have to do is apply some PVA glue to the spots where you want the material to stick and then just dump it all over the base. Tap off the excess of the base and let the glue dry. That's all. And you'll have some neat rocks and grass on your base. They sell a lot of different packets of this stuff in different colors and styles and I would definitely recommend you check them out. I'll put a link to them in the description below. This is not paid for by them, I just really love the products. So now it's time for some blood and gore. This channel is called Fog of Gore for a reason. So I took the Neophyte model from the Gene Stealer Cult and I cut it in smaller bits. The leg and arm are separated and I glued the torso on in a warped way. Then I primed that all black and now I'm gluing these parts to the base and onto the fist of the dread. I want to work with a lot of blood and gore on the model, so the clothes of this neophyte will have to contrast nicely with that. So of course I'm going to work with white and beige tones. I'll go through these steps quickly because there isn't much skill involved. I just use one or two layers to get a bit of coverage. But I don't bother working too clean because any mistakes will be covered up by the blood anyway. So I'm starting with grey sear on the cloth of the model. This whole jumpsuit gets this color. Then I'm using rock art flesh on the chest piece that was supposed to protect this guy. Then I apply Screaming Skull to the head. Now that's a good base for a sickly looking skin for the Gene Stealer Cult. I then use Mornfang Brown for the leather bits and his gloves, Ashen Grey for the boots and pistol, and then Lead Belcher for the dagger and other metal details. This all gets a wash with Agrax Urchery. To finish the skin, I apply a wash of Karlberg Crimson, just to make him look a bit more like a Gene Stealer. And finally, it's time for the blood and gore. Uh, I picked up this technique from Miniac, and it's very easy. You just mix some Games Workshop Blood for the Blood God technical paint with Uhu glue, and you get some chunky, gory bits. And you can use this to draw out these strings of gore. You mix it together in the lid of a used jar, for example, with a piece of wood, and then apply it to this model. You have to work very fast with this though, because the glue sets quickly and you want to make sure it sticks to the model. I just kept adding more glue and more paint until I thought there was enough on this guy. And then I added a bit more. I don't know how long these strings of gore will hold, but even if they break and I lose them, the model will still look cool with plenty of blood all around. And that's the Dreadnought finished. 
He looks battered and beaten and covered in grime. He'll fit perfectly in the army that I'm building for the local Escalation League here. The lore behind this army is that my Ultramarines have been in the combat zone for a while and have been foot slogging it through the dust and dirt. And that's why they're covered in dust and they have some scrapes and knocks on their armor. But they don't have rust anywhere because rust is a sign of decay and a lack of maintenance and I don't think the Primarch would stand for that. So thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the links in the description. I have a lot more painting recipes and videos for you. If you want to support me, you can do so through Patreon. Thanks again for watching and see you next time.